the airport generates. So I think with that, um, on, on another thing I want to point out real quick too is we do have comment cards in the library. We have brought some pens and some comment cards. So even when we're done tonight, if any of you have some, some thoughts, some concerns, some comments, please jot them down and drop them in the box we provided out there. We, we want the input. We want to know what you're all thinking. And then I think the city might be providing some kind of a link as well. So. Well, I think that any time you take on a venture like this, you're all probably sitting there going, holy cow. Um, there's a lot here. And I think that it's uh, important for all of us to look at this as an opportunity. This is an opportunity for our community to look at the facilities that we have and how do we move forward. I don't want anybody to walk away from here scared tonight that the city of Elberly is going to move ahead with every single one of these projects today. But I think it gives us a framework from which to work from so that we know the concerns of the different facilities that we have and looking at the options. What might be the best for us as a community? It'll stir a lot of conversation and I hope that all of you that have been here tonight will go out there and, and look at it as an opportunity for us as a community to do what's best for us in the future. And there's a lot of money associated with this and that's what scares us all. Uh, but that we have to be realistic in understanding that the facilities that we have, we need, and we need to move forward with that. And so understanding what there is there and what the concerns are there and how we address those in the future is really important to all of us. And so I want you to look at this as an opportunity tonight. I appreciate you coming. I think we'll open it up now to questions. And if you have any certain questions, just I think we can probably, can you hear them, just say them or what do you want to do? I think Bruce and I will kind of navigate the, uh, the Q&A portion of the meeting tonight. You're certainly willing to uh, leave if you've uh, heard what you need to hear, but I think we want to try to make sure we get a good representation of, of questions and comments, so we'll just open things up. Harold. Uh, how much is this study cost? Um, I don't know if I have the number right off the top of my head, but I want to say it was about uh, $100,000, and if you think about that in terms of the total scope of the architectural and design of all the facilities, which are going to be in the millions of dollars, it's a fairly small piece in terms of making sure that we're planning correctly on the proper sites and, and obviously looking at the needs of the, of the facilities in terms of the priorities moving forward, so it's around that range. No, one of the one of the gentlemen that was uh, part of our team, Don Don Iberg was a is a consultant that actually worked on the uh, Ralph Engelstadt Arena uh, from North Dakota State, and he was actually part of our team as well. And and they work. I mean, they're definitely they're workable. Uh, you would you would go in some right now, and and they use the old shower area that doesn't work as shower. They use that for changing areas. Uh, and, and so, so, and again, the arena works. The, sir, the, the arena works the way it is. We're just saying there were some deficiencies that we saw. Where are so. you getting the money for all this stuff? Well, I think that's part of the uh, question and, and answer tonight we're, is. We're get grants out of work. The government don't have the money. Yeah, actually, there are some grants, and I'll, no, I'll, I'll get to that if you I'll allow me to. Um, particularly on the uh, city arena property, I think one of the questions for the community will be based on the analysis that, that Bruce and BKV have provided, how much more do we want to invest in the city arena? For example, what if we need to make repairs of $1.5 million just to continue its operation for five, 10 years? And then if we wanted to add some of the amenities like a, a lobby and some of the other things that would really make it a, a destination arena, do we want to spend two, $2.5 million out of, the, out of the existing site to maintain it uh, for 15, 20 years potentially, or do we want to make the small improvements now and wait to move the arena to the Blazing Star Center? And that's what we want your feedback on. And there are some grants that are available to ICE arenas right now uh, for some of the improvements. And a very good example of that that will work well is the Mighty Ducks grant, where we can use that for some of the technical improvements like the HVAC system or even for bleachers. Think of the example of bleachers right now at the arena. They need to be replaced. Um, and if we were to replace those now, but yet have it in our mindset that we can move those bleachers over to the new arena in the future, that might be a logical opportunity to take advantage of because those mighty duck grants that are provided by the state aren't there every year. 
And I think another example of taking an opportunity, even though the airport isn't the top priority here, we do know that there are federal or state funds available in the next year or two where we can get, I believe it's 80% funding of that project. That funding might not be there in two, three, or four years. So does it make sense now to take advantage of 80% grant funding while it's there um, until it's maybe potentially eliminated forever in the future? So there are some grant opportunities and I can speak to the blade and start landing on that um, as well. But I want to open up for some more questions yeah, from the crowd. Just, okay. we got one up top here. How many acres is, is totally in the old farmland site? That, how many acres will all this building take up? Well, the total acreage from, from all the area is about 60 acres, but I think the, the buildable area, if I recall, was about 40 acres or 35 acres. So it's still a fairly large. So you take up half? About. Yeah, a little more than, about half, a little bit more than half. Other questions before we come back here? I want to make sure we get a good representation of questions, John. Yeah, those tie together in terms of the economic development component and... I would think that uh, there would at least uh, three or four players. Yeah. That's a good point. And one of the things with the Blazing Star Center, you know, Bruce mentioned all the collaboration with all the various different entities. Even if we got the YMCA, senior resources, the mail, the school district, all on board to uh, fund a portion of the facility and worked out an operational deal in the future we're still far short of what we need to come up with cash for the project. So that's gonna mean a large debt amount on either any of those jurisdictions, maybe all of the jurisdictions, including the community. So even if those partners are on board, we still need some other partners. And one of those other partners, as Bruce had mentioned, would be private development. We would have to have some security to make sure that there's some private development moving forward per a development agreement. And that would have to initially start um, before the public facilities would. But that's why we want to lay it out, make sure that we're preserving that space in the future. We could capture that new tax revenue, for example, new, for example and, and utilize that new tax revenue to help pay for a portion of the public facilities. The other critical third uh, opportunity for funding uh, for the community center is the state of Minnesota. Last year in the bonding session, if you look at the various different regional centers around the state, uh, Rochester, Mankato, St. Cloud got significant millions of dollars of funds to fund their civic centers. The city of Marshall, which is smaller than we are, also got $4 million to build a regional community complex. So next year, as there's a bonding year, is it an opportunity for us to maybe go after some fund for this site or that project? That's a question we need to hear back from the community. Again, we'd have to have the private development on board, all the local partners on board, and the state bonding in place. So it's very complex. It would be very challenging to, to, to do, but is that what the community wants right now? Yep. Uh, the airport was uh, generally, if you look at the, the total math, Steve or Matt can correct me if I'm wrong, was either 90 or 95 percent uh, federal funding. And the local authorities had to pay for about 5 or 10 percent of that, all the improvements that were done. I've got another question over here. Do you guys know where the, the gold is kept? Where at? <laughs> we don't. We haven't found that you in the community. Maybe all five you don't know. No, we don't, and that's that's part of the question that we want Fort comments Knox. back. It's not in Fort Knox. It's in two banks, <laughs> and we store five countries in these banks from different countries in these banks. They trust us with their money. Some other questions, yep. sir? Sir, over there, please. How does all this affect the downtown redevelopment that was just? You know, are we competing? This area competing with the downtown redevelopment, or what? Uh, that's actually a very good question because. Uh, one of the councilmen asked us that at one of the last meetings. And, you know, when you look at the proximity of Blazing Star to kind of the core downtown, we don't think it would hurt it at all. We think what the, the services and the things that it provides really 
for the most part, are, are not really in conflict with it. You are, I mean, what's happening down here along Broadway, I think is great. The new restaurants, the, the, the local brewery that opened tonight. I mean, you're seeing some great opportunities. The, the housing development that's occurring, uh, the redevelopment of the housing occurring. So you're seeing some great things that are happening. So I, in our opinion, there's room for a lot of this. And a lot of it's not, in our opinion, it's not competing. But again, what Chad said is we think an important part of this, and we do a lot of not just government projects, which is part of our company's focus, but we also do a lot of development projects with a lot of housing developers. We're going to try to, over the next you know six, seven, eight months, we're going to try to bring some of those folks to the table as well and get their feedback, see what they think is viable and the financial viability of some of this as well. Sir, that you had a question as well? Well, I think the next steps, obviously, we want to get your comments back tonight, particularly on more of the um, functional facilities like the fire department, the public works, and the airport. You know, the city council is going to take back the comments from tonight and be talking about that over probably a number of different uh, public council meetings over the next several months to see which ones we want to prioritize and which ones the community from their feedback where we want to go and staff is already starting to look at options on well how are we going to fund this um, there's a variety of different options to fund it um, whether it's property taxes whether it's grant dollars as we've noted here before uh, if we've had some surplus money from some of our our general fund if we continue to have that can we use some of that towards the facilities those are all going to be council and community policy decisions to see the best way to move forward particularly on those with the blazing star center we view that to have more public dialogue. We're gonna have more sessions like this, probably not of more of a formal presentation, but more of just community dialogue. Um, you know, we did a community survey three years ago, and that was a statistically significant, accurate um, sampling of the community, where it's about 95% accurate in terms of the Blazing Star Center, and two thirds of the community supported a community center on that site as well as about 70% supported some mixed use on that site. So we're kind of combining those two together. There, so there appears to be community support on that. And we also asked the question as well too, would you be willing to increase your taxes um, to make this happen? Um, what we didn't ask is by how much? And that's gonna be the critical <laughs> question and that's what we're gonna to need to hear back from you. And we can run some of those numbers and run some of those samples to see is this something that you can support, and whether it's $10 a month, whether it's $30 a month? We haven't looked into it in that level of detail yet, but those are the type of answers that we need to get out to the community before the council um, and, and the community ultimately makes decisions. We might have to go to a referendum on some of these uh, facilities based on what the council can decide to bond for and pay for versus where we have to go to the public uh, to ask their approval for some of these facilities. Well, I think there's a couple different options there. Um, number one, in the interim, if we were to hypothetically build the fire facility within the next three years, we know that we've got a lot of space vacant. So let's so, say that we move forward with, with option A, where we remodel um, the city facility, put the library all on the second floor, move engineering up to the top floor, maybe bring back the park department and the recreation department to city hall. There's a variety of different options there that leaves a whole lower level open. And we could lease that out potentially to maybe a business or professional service that's growing in the community until that long-term plan where the whole um, property is bought out. There is a possibility that um, a developer or somebody may come in and want to acquire the whole city property. I don't think the city council has, has ruled that out. We're not necessarily 
aggressively seeking that out at this point in time and we'll need to have that discussion as a council and as um, feedback from the public we want to you know, seek out such opportunities but we we think that could be a possibility based on the proximity to the lake and is it the highest and best use of that property probably not um, but it's what we're with today but I think there is potential for that yes more so than city property because that's exactly what you pointed out with the existing city hall. We have that on beautiful lakefront property which is high tax base property and it would make more sense to try to get more of that back on the tax rolls and that would be part of the uh, interest in uh, the fire department for instance being put over on Main Street not in necessarily a high rent district. Um, it potentially could be, but as it is now, it's not being utilized, it's underutilized. So that makes that kind of a good spot that, that a location they had for that. Yeah, and that's why we decided that because there's been a lot of dialogue both internally in the organization at the council level um, that, you know, maybe we should be adding the fire facility to um, the Blazing Star site. But to your point, we want to try to preserve a lot of that, especially the lakefront that we're, if we move Front Street, that's going to open up some prime lakefront property. We would not be putting the public facilities on that. That's where we want the private facilities. But with these community centers and level of activity and having some retail and maybe some mixed use housing around it, it could really be a destination and have both the tax base and the destination concept at the same time. Um, there probably isn't another piece of land with the exception of maybe out by the arena right now that makes sense for a community rec center that's big enough. Um, and that's probably not the best location for that type of a facility from the economic development standpoint. We'd like to bring people into uh, the center of the community so that restaurants and retail businesses uh, can benefit from all those people um, traveling to Albert Lee. Um, and another option that we've talked about is working with partners such as the YMCA. If they decide to be a partner in this, maybe that their existing site becomes developable property uh, for mixed use housing or for whatever it is and becomes taxable land. Um, so making sure that they're in the right place, but we've been trying to limit the amount of public facilities on the Blazing Star Landing. We could also you know, put the public work facility there uh, too, but again, we don't, want, we don't think that's the highest and best use of the property. Unless other um, members of the public disagree and think we should move forward with those. Ellen? already done on our airport and that in 95 percent to pay with grant monies that this was a very high priority government issue up you know of upgrading airports etc and um, it appears that that grant money not all of it but some of it is still there at maybe an 80 percent level eventually that money is going to go away mm -hmm. it just seems to me that on a short on a short term priority that finishing the airport when all that grant money is out there because slowly someone else is going to use it and it'll be at 70 percent and it'll be at 60 percent one day it just won't be there you know just finish the airport when when those grant monies are as high as they are and i think you have an estimate on what the cost of that project would be so you know and if i remember right it wasn't an exorbitant amount of money that would be the part of the city of Elbert Lake that public works, I just have to say, you know, it's not in a very high visible area, so people don't see it a lot, but if you ever go out and you do see it, it's kind of like a home where you need to fix the furnace, and it's not really more fuzzy, but you just need to fix the furnace, or you're gonna, yeah. you know, um, public works really needs to have attention paid to it, whether, that's my opinion, it's, it's you know, on, on an ongoing basis till that can be upgraded. And then at the same time, it's going to take time for the Blaze and Star. I mean, the Blaze and Star is going to take yep. several years or more of planning. But the airport really is ready, is just ready to, you know, finish now. Well, 
we'll take a few more comments and questions from the audience and then we'll probably wrap up. Um, we have all of us are going to stick around here and we can um, you know, talk to you individually and we'd certainly encourage you to fill out the comment cards. Uh, but we'll be sticking around here for a little while. So any more questions or comments? Harold? Did you people look at City Hall and recommend certain changes specifically for City Hall, like a new look, a new furnace, new doors, new bathroom? Just being done. A lot of that has been Sorry, being done. I mean, the yeah, city's did been. Did you recommend that? There were there were some things we did recommend. Yes, there was there were some things to report. But overall, and and, and we actually put cost associated with some of that. What we would consider capital maintenance, maintenance upkeep. Um, but really, the city has been in the process of, of, of converting the bathrooms to accessibility, uh, to accessible bathrooms. I'm talking about a remodel recently, $41,000 for a rent. Yeah, and that's correct. We've been doing basically one floor of the restrooms, the men and the women, um, each year. And this is now the third year. And we're um, getting those into compliance and getting those repaired. We did put on a new roof here in the last couple of years. And we really need to do something with our our HVAC system, our heating, ventilation, and cooling system. So it gets back to Bruce's earlier point where we've done a lot of work in, in upgrades to City Hall, so it's in a good functional structural stage right now. John? We actually had another um, engineer and consultant come in and do that prior to BKV, so a lot of that work was already done prior to John. Yeah, I think there's been some early discussion on the EOC, um, the Emergency Operations Center, which really doesn't exist right now in a, the capacity that it needs to. So that could be a piece that could be added to the fire facility, maybe right away. And then the police comes way down the future. And what if we get to a point where we are growing and the county is growing with their staff and the police and, and sheriff's department just don't have the room there? That's more of a long, long-term plan with the police moving. There's not any immediate future with that. Um, the Blazing Star Landing is something that we've had just some very, very preliminary discussions on. Um, is there something that they need uh, from a public services standpoint that might fit with the uh, community center? They were invited in uh, to some of the discussions early on, and they really haven't spoken about any you know critical needs that they have, but maybe they enjoy being a partner because they, they see the value of that site in terms of uh, economic development in Freeborn County. So that's, that's an option there. Yeah, we've actually talked to the township and that's actually part of the, the vision is that even if the, the township fire department stays as its own separate entity, that it does make sense in our opinion because we utilize a lot of the township volunteers for for calls and there's a lot of collaboration already that would be in the same facility and so that we're not duplicating has there been any thought to eliminating the albert lee township having albert lee connect to what they want because the township is so small huh? yeah we've talked a lot to the township about that over the last three to five years and i think there's some interest there um and i think you know this is one of the things that we're going to be taking to them is one of those technical follow-ups to see, are they in, are they not in, um, to what capacity do they want to be involved? And we can't just eliminate the Everly uh, Township Fire Department, but I think there are ways that, you know, we're strengthening our relationship with that department, which has been working very well, um, and just building those relationships. Well, oh, that, yeah, I, I think, you know, they can certainly eliminate that if they want to and contract with the city of Albert Lee to provide um, coverage in their area. And that's, that's always an option. option. We've had some other townships that are a little bit more assertive in working with the city of Albert Lee and maybe making those mergers or those contracts happen because uh, trying to find volunteer firefighters, not only in Freeborn County, but throughout the state of Minnesota has become more and more challenging every year. And one of the things I want to point out, too, when we do the space planning for these facilities, 
we look for opportunities as much as possible to create shared spaces, spaces that have multiple functions to, to, so that you're not creating such a big facility, but you're utilizing the space you have well. And in all fire stations, there's space that's needed for training and meetings and things like that. So right now the plan is that that space could double as an emergency operations center. Uh, I, the, the, the city and the county have just put together an emergency operations kind of a management group uh, chief could probably talk to that a little bit more and they're starting to strategize and put that together so in the event of a serious event uh, and a tornado or whatever and those various individuals need to come to an appropriate space to to coordinate what needs to be done from a health and safety standpoint what's currently in the county government center is really in our opinions inadequate so if you were to build a fire station and build a large meeting room that had those capabilities at the very least it provides some redundancy for safety. So that's planned into the plan as well. So I think we're closed with the Q&A uh, session. Uh, Bruce or Mayor, do you wanna have any final comments or closing comments? Um, otherwise, we'll, I'll turn it back to the mayor. A little bit of a back problem, so I'm sorry about the slow walk. Um, just once again, wanna tell everybody thank you. Appreciate you coming out and be that ambassador for us and be out there talking to people about these opportunities. We ask you to go out and let people know some of the concepts that have been talked about to you here tonight. Understanding that they are concepts, there's opportunity in everything that we've looked at tonight. Uh, does not mean we're moving ahead with all those opportunities today. I can't stress that enough. Sometimes we take the enormity of what we've been presented here tonight and it is heavy. There's a lot of cost out there and we have to find ways to fund those but over the course of time, staff and the council and the community will work together to try to make some of those happen so that the future, and I think that's the important part here, it's the future that we're building for and bringing those opportunities to those people so they really can succeed. So once again, I say thanks. We'll be, all of us will be mingling around here. So if you have an opportunity or another question you wanna ask, you sure can come down and do that. But otherwise, have a good night and I appreciate you spending your night with us. Thank you. <laughs>